So today we're going to talk about the patient that presents with a chief complaint of shortness of breath. Imagine this, you're in the middle of a busy emergency department. Or better yet, you're flying solo as the GMED cross cover in the middle of the night, when all of a sudden your nurse pages you and tells you that a patient you don't really know too much about is having shortness of breath. What are the things that you need to look for in this patient? And how is that going to guide your management so that you can make sure the patient survives the night and is able to be further worked up in the morning by the primary team? So let's go ahead and get started. As always, the first thing you need to do when you see a chief complaint is develop your critical differential diagnosis. So for shortness of breath, that would be pneumonia, pneumothorax, PE, asthma, or a COPD exacerbation, CHF exacerbation, and ACS. So now that you've thought about your critical differential, the next step is to actually walk over to the patient and see how they're doing. So like all things in medicine, shortness of breath is a spectrum, where your patient can be in either mild, moderate, or severe respiratory distress. Figuring out where on the spectrum your patient is is really important because it'll guide your initial resuscitative steps. But like I said, this is a spectrum. So your patient may not just be in mild, moderate, or severe respiratory distress, but may actually be in between. They may be in mild to moderate or moderate to severe respiratory distress. So how do you figure out where on the spectrum your patient is with regard to their respiratory status? Well, you may want to look at a couple of things, like what's the patient's respiratory rate? What's their O2 sat? Are they using accessory muscles or having retractions? And finally, how many words can they speak in a sentence before they need to take a breath? These are subtle clues that will tip you in as to whether or not they're in mild or mild to moderate, moderate, moderate to severe, or severe respiratory distress. And because this is a spectrum, we can't really give you a specific table to memorize, such as if their respiratory rate is 25, they're in severe respiratory distress. A lot of this will be developed as you see more and more patients with shortness of breath. You will remember to take their shirt off so that you can really look to see if there are retractions. Instead of trusting the monitor, you'll actually count the respiratory rate. You'll look to see if your patient is having a prolonged expiratory phase, which could tip you off that they're in a COPD or asthma exacerbation. So once you've figured out where on the spectrum your patient is and you've determined what their most likely critical differential diagnosis is, you can then figure out what the most appropriate algorithm is for their initial resuscitation. So for example, let's say your patient is having a CHF exacerbation. If they're in mild respiratory distress, you may consider giving them Lasix. If they're now moving more towards moderate, you may consider giving them Lasix and Nitro. And as they start tipping over into moderate to severe respiratory distress, the key thing would be to start BiPAP. If they're in severe respiratory distress, these two interventions would convert into DRIPS and you would intubate the patient. So we'll talk more about CHF exacerbation in that lecture, but I just wanted to give you a quick sense as to how to approach a patient with shortness of breath and how to apply this concept of determining what degree of respiratory distress they're in in order to guide your initial resuscitative efforts. Now, while you're treating your patient and beginning to resuscitate them, you'll want to start ordering some labs and some imaging and treatments for your patient. In order to do that, we need to, again, reassess our differential diagnosis to figure out what are the appropriate tests that we should be ordering. So once again, our differential diagnosis would be pneumonia, pneumothorax, PE, asthma, COPD exacerbation, CHF exacerbation, and ACS. From this list, we can order the appropriate labs and make sure that we're not missing something critical. So we'll start with CBC, 
to make sure our patient isn't anemic, a basic metabolic panel to make sure that we're not missing an electrolyte abnormality. Potentially, your patient could be in DKA, and that's why they're having tachypnea. An EKG and troponin to make sure your patient isn't having acute myocardial infarction. A BNP if you're worried that your patient is volume overloaded from heart failure. And finally, plus or minus a D-dimer, depending on what your patient's well score or PERC score is and what your degree of suspicion is for pulmonary embolism. For imaging, you'd want to get a chest x-ray to make sure your patient isn't having a pneumonia or a pneumothorax. If your D-dimer comes back positive or your patient is high risk for his well score, you may need to also get a CT to further assess for pulmonary embolism. Now remember, all of this is meant to be a framework for you to figure out what your initial workup will be for this patient who is having shortness of breath. Based off of the history and physical, you may determine that your patient is having maybe an asthma exacerbation, and as a result, you wouldn't need to do any of these testings, but rather would just treat them and reassess to see if they become stable enough to go home. So hopefully this lecture really helped with your approach to the patient with a cheap complaint of shortness of breath. How are you actually going to manage this patient? How are you going to approach them? What are the critical differentials that you need to consider? How do you work them up? And how do you initially treat them? Thanks for watching.